Now we come to the operation itself. Valves can be repaired in a variety of ways. Most leaky valves have prolapse in one or both of the leaflets, which means that the leaflet is riding high instead of closing properly. This portion of the leaflet either needs to be removed and the valve brought back into a more normal configuration, or the leaflet needs to be brought back down again and supported by artificial cords, which are made out of Gore-Tex. Either of these techniques may be appropriate for a given patient. In addition, most valves that are leaking have been stretched and the valve needs to be tightened up and brought back into a more normal geometry using a ring. Mitral stenosis is usually a result of rheumatic fever as a child. This disease causes inflammation in the valve, which over a period of years creates scar tissue. The result is that the valve leaflets become partially fused such that they do not properly open. In this case, the valve can often be repaired by cutting the scar tissue. This is called a mitral commissurotomy. In other cases, a patch may be needed. A patch increases the flexibility of the valve leaflets, which allows for a better seal when the valve closes. If the valve cannot be repaired, valve replacement may be the appropriate option. In this case, the patient has a choice of selecting a mechanical valve or tissue valve. The mechanical valve has the advantage of having virtually no failure rate for however long the patient lives. The disadvantage, however, is the need for lifelong anticoagulation or blood thinners. The alternative is a valve made out of either cow or pig tissue. These valves have the advantage of not requiring blood thinning medication. The problem with the tissue valve is that over a period of time it may wear out and need to be replaced again. The specific failure rate of tissue valves depends upon the type of valve and the location as well as the age of the patient. All of these factors will be discussed with you by your surgeon so that you can make an informed decision as to which type of valve you feel would be appropriate for you. I hope this has helped you. Please look at the mitral valve disease pages elsewhere on this website, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.